Hi, I'm Tim Thielman. I'm going to be your guide today for a brief tour of my favorite American city, Buffalo, New York. We're going to start at a parking ramp of all places, very typical of ramps you'd see in the downtown of any major American city, with the exception of the view from the top. At the top, we're going to see a panorama of the 19th century city at its absolute peak. So come on, we'll go up and you'll be absolutely blown away. All right, the reason I brought you up here is because the top of this ramp affords a graphic illustration of why Buffalo became the great 19th century city that it was. And we start with the natural resource of the Great Lakes and Lake Erie. You can see it here, it's stretching westward to Minnesota for 1,200 miles. We connect it with the Atlantic Ocean via the Erie Canal in 1825, and immediately we have a welter of economic activities developing that culminate in an absolute explosion of economic development after the Civil War, and this attracts leading architects from around the nation. Daniel Burnham of Chicago designs the Ellicott Square building. We have Richard Upjohn of New York, an East Coast architect designing St. Paul's Episcopal Cathedral, and across the street, the magnificent Guarantee Building, a masterpiece of modern architecture by Lewis Sullivan of Chicago, a Western architect. So we have some East meets West over here, but it all starts this will to greatness with a landscape architect, Frederick Law Olmsted. In 1868, Olmsted was commissioned to design a system of parks for Buffalo. Thirty years later, America's first urban park system was completed, giving order to a city that was just beginning to assert itself. And at its heart was Delaware Park, 350 acres of green space that anchors Olmsted's vision. Olmsted laced the city with tree-lined parkways that gave rise to some of Buffalo's grandest neighborhoods. And the more wealth that accumulated, the bigger the houses became. But the real mansions were reserved for Delaware Avenue, a grand boulevard like few others in the country. It quickly became known as Millionaire's Row and was the pinnacle of Buffalo's social prestige in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. These majestic homes were powerful statements by their owners. But in the late 1860s, a young architect came to Buffalo and made a statement that, in time, resonated throughout the world of architecture. Shortly after Frederick Law Olmsted begins his design for a Buffalo park system, Henry Hobson Richardson is retained to design the Buffalo State Hospital, a commission which would be the largest of his career. He produces a building that is at once picturesque and magnificent. It includes a pair of 200-foot towers, Norman-inspired, that soar over the surrounding cityscape, becoming a landmark not only for the city of Buffalo, but American architecture as a whole. Solidity was its main characteristic. The rough Medina sandstone, deep window reveals, and cavernous door openings defined a style that became known as Richardsonian Romanesque. The commission was near the beginning of a brilliant career for Richardson, who went on to become the first American architect to achieve international fame. But he wasn't the first to leave his mark on Buffalo. In 1851, St. Paul's Episcopal Cathedral was completed. It was designed by Richard Upjohn, best known for Trinity Church in New York City. At the time, it was considered one of the finest churches in the nation. Buffalo had its first architectural landmark. Before the century was out, another landmark would rise beside it. In 1895, Lewis Sullivan's vision for the tall building reached its zenith in the form of the Guarantee Building. Ornate terracotta walls rising sheer up seemed to mirror Buffalo's newfound stature and its rise to prominence among the world's modern cities. The guarantee was the fullest expression of a new architectural aesthetic. As the steel was going up for Sullivan's masterpiece, 
construction was also beginning on a building, the sheer bulk of which was startling. Consuming an entire city block, Daniel Burnham's elegant square rises around an elaborate central atrium of inlaid mosaic tile. It was promoted as the largest office building in the world. Buffalo, New York, the 1890s at its absolute cultural apogee. Tremendous economic activity downtown is attracting great architects. Daniel Burnham, Louis Sullivan designs his masterpiece guarantee building. Buffalo also has H.H. Richardson designing the Buffalo State Hospital. And finally, at the turn of the century, the genius himself, Frank Lloyd Wright, arrives on the scene. Just as Sullivan changed the aesthetic of the tall building, so too did Wright change the face of the American residents. He brought it closer to the earth by emphasizing horizontal lines and integrating it into the surrounding environment. His designs were quintessentially American, and Buffalo has one of the largest collections of Frank Lloyd Wright structures in the nation. Darwin Martin Estate, located in the Parkside District, an area conceived by Frederick Law Olmsted, is the jewel of that collection. The compound, completed in 1905, one of the largest Wright ever designed, was to suffer from lack of maintenance and partial demolition. It was rescued by sustained citizen efforts starting in the 1980s most ambitious Frank Lloyd Wright restoration ever undertaken. It's back to its original glory. Complementing the historic site is a world-class visitor center by architect Toshiko Mori. Buffalo, both in architecture and interior design, was central to the arts and crafts movement. Just south of Buffalo, in East Aurora, is Elbert Hubbard's Roycroft community with its meticulously restored Roycroft Inn. Through the mid-20th century, great architecture continued to rise along Olmsted's system of parkways. Situated on one of his many traffic circles is a modern masterpiece, Kleinhans Music Hall. Designed by the great Finnish father and son team of Eliel and Eero Saarinen, Kleinhans is an example of the will to greatness that continued well into the 20th century, bringing with it some of the world's greatest architectural talent to Buffalo. How could you not love Buffalo? A fantastic city with streets lined by buildings by the greatest architects America has ever produced plus an entire cadre of great local architects such as E.B. Green and Eisenwein and Johnson who designed the buildings behind me here. Together they produced a architectural culture and legacy which truly makes Buffalo a great American city. You can experience Buffalo's architectural heritage and historic neighborhoods in many ways. Preservation Buffalo Niagara offers guided walks all year long, including one of Buffalo's spectacular Art Deco City Hall each weekday at noon. Forgotten Buffalo explores the region's ethnic neighborhoods, classic taverns, and off-the-beaten-path oddities. And during the summer, the Campaign for Greater Buffalo offers unique overviews of Buffalo's architecture and history aboard its open-air autobus. For more information, visit rightnowinbuffalo.com.